OK, now, uh, we might uh, take a look at one of the few seats tonight that has definitely changed hands, as it has done a number of times in the past, and that is the seat of Norwood uh, in uh, Adelaide's Inner East. It has been held for 13 years uh, for Labor by Vinnie Ciccarello. She had a margin of 4% going into this campaign, uh, but with 71.1% of the vote counted, she has lost that seat. Well, she's been fighting some tough campaigns in the past. Uh, this time she was beaten by someone who clearly won or clearly fought an even tougher campaign. A Stephen Marshall for the Liberal Party, 46%. Vinnie Ciccarello, only 30, 34%. Now, this is big swing territory. Uh, it's 9%, 2% above the state average. So, uh, where you're talking of a marginal Labor seat, then my feeling would be that, uh, that Stephen Marshall can pat himself on the back for certainly exceeding the usual swing which has occurred in those marginal Labor seats. And Stephen Marshall joins us now from Norwood. Well, you've uh, heard, Stephen, you can, you, you can give yourself a good pat on the back. You've been given the uh, right to do so by Dean Gench. Thank you, Dean. Uh, wh what do you uh, put the big swing towards you down to? I think we've run a really uh, hard campaign here in Norwood. It didn't start sort of three or four months ago. It started two years ago when we were pre-selected. When we did our pre-selection in Norwood, we've worked very, very hard. Uh, and I think that people look... I think they've, they've made a decision that the government wasn't listening to them. They looked at the alternative, which was Isabel Redmond. They felt very positive. She's a plain-speaking, common-sense person. Uh, who appeals very much to the electorate of Norwood, and I think we've got a great swing and a great result. Now, you have very strong environmental credentials. You've worked fairly tirelessly in areas of recycling and composting and areas such as that. How much did the support from the Green vote, if you like, help to get you across the line? To be quite honest, Dominic, I haven't actually seen the uh, sort of preference flow from the Greens. I was very disappointed that the Greens decided to uh, preference the Labor Party o over and above the Liberal Party in this instance. Uh, I, think it was a, I think it was a mistake. Uh, they position themselves as a grassroots uh, party and yet in this instance they decided to uh, go with a macro uh, position and, and uh, preference the Labor Party. I think that was a mistake but I'd be very interested to look at the preference flow. And how much was the leadership an issue? I think it was a major point of difference. I mean, people loved Isabel in Norwood. They see her as somebody that's very believable, very trustworthy, and somebody that's got a vision for South Australia in terms of water, health, education. They, they love her idea of the ICAC and also her ideas to preserve Glenside, which is a major issue in our local area. There's been some discussion on the panel here this evening about uh, the Liberal Party trying to move towards a, a new type of candidate. Um, would you see yourself as part of that new generation, some fresh blood into the party? Well, it's true that I don't have a, a great Liberal pedigree. In fact, I only joined the Liberal Party three years ago. Uh, but I think, um, I th yeah, I think it's... Uh, the Liberal Party attracts people from all different backgrounds, people that uh, have come through the Liberal Party, their parents have been a member of the Liberal Party and so on and so forth, and people that are just attracted to the ideals of the individual, uh, the freedom, enterpri uh, free enterprise and a whole pile of other things that the Liberal Party stands for. Stephen Marshall, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Dominic. Now, we're going to continue uh, our seat runs and it'll be interesting with this next run of uh, safe Liberal seats to see whether a similar pattern emerges there in reverse to what we uh, saw in Labor, one would suggest it will. Can we have a look at the seat of Bragg in uh, the south southeastern suburbs? Uh, uh, we talked to Vicky Chapman earlier. She's held this seat since 2002 on a margin of 12%, but with uh, nearly 60% of the vote counted. Uh, how does she look, Dean? Well, she looks absolutely rock solid safe. There's no question she'll be returned 8,000 to 2,000 in primary votes. Uh, if you turn that to percentages, it's 63% to 20%. Uh, and that indicates, of course, that there is going to be evidence of a major swing to the Liberal Party again. Mm. 9.6, again, in a safe Liberal area, bigger than the uh, statewide swing. Uh, so it's happened, it's happened again across these safe Liberal seats. Vicky Chapman will be back into the Parliament. Similar story in Wait, uh, former leader Martin Hamilton-Smith's seat in the inner southern suburbs. Nearly 74% of the vote counted, uh, another big swing. Well, this one's not really a safe seat. It's, it's, you know, I wouldn't even call it comfortable. I have to consider it as a marginal Liberal seat. If, if there was going to be a swing to the Labor Party anywhere, it would have happened 
uh, this would have been one of the seats that had fallen. But instead of that, uh, Martin Hamilton Smith has significantly increased his share of the first preference votes and significantly increased his share of the two party preferred votes. Safe now. So it's safe now, but notice that this is still above the, the uh, statewide average, so it's not happening in the same way. This is a marginal seat that had just as big a swing as the safe seat. OK, now Davenport, we had a bit of a chuckle over those strange aberrations in Davenport earlier uh, yeah. in the night. Another former leader in uh, Ian Evans. Yeah. Southern suburbs, 6.3% uh, margin for the Liberals, 75% of the vote nearly counted. I, I take no blame for what happened earlier, <laughs> when, and I'm sorry Ian Evans if, if we caused you some nervous heart palpitations, but our computer's now back in order, or whether it was something that, that is now back in order. Uh, Ian Evans is, is leading 52% of the first preference votes. It, uh, it won't even require preferences with that trend continuing yeah. there. Uh, so there's been a swing of 6%, just under the statewide average. I think it's a very healthy result for Ian Evans. And again, Ian, I do apologise that we got it wrong. So come forward. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the seat of Cavell. Uh, this is uh, rural. This is the Adelaide Hills. Mark Goldsworthy. Well... Has, uh, this is... Uh, he's about to enter his third term on a margin of 8.1% before tonight. Well, it's a dynasty seat, really. Mark mm. Goldsworthy, the son of Mr Goldsworthy, who was the former member, so it's, uh, it's something that happens a bit in South Australia. Again, wins the seat easily on first preference votes. Uh, be no need whatsoever for preferences. It's, it's a hill seat, it's a rural seat. Uh, it's one where would you expect this sort of result. Slightly under the uh, statewide average, but it's still a big swing for the Liberal Party. Mr Goldsworthy can continue uh, in the Parliament. So, um, so those, uh, those two sets of seat runs, the, the safe Labor seats and the Liberal seats, same song, really, isn't it? That uh, big swings away from Labor, big swings mostly to the Liberals in those already pretty safe seats. Well, exactly. And, you know, I take uh, Dean's comment that, you know, those in the Western suburbs like myself will have to reflect on why we've had large swings against us. You know, I think there's also some natural correction in some of the the Western seats where we have had larger swings previously, but that's clearly an issue uh, I have to be conscious of. The last advice I've got to date, uh, Kerry, is that uh, Bright and Mitchell are too close to call. They'll be the result of extended uh, counting and recounting, I guess, of postal votes. Uh, Hartley, again, we're not in a position to call that, even though we are you know, reasonably confident that we've uh, been able to hold on to Hartley. We're not in a position to call that at this stage. OK, Rob, any updates? Yeah, look, the intelligence from headquarters is, is very much the same. That is, the uh, two close-to-call seats tonight would add... We include, obviously, Bright, uh, Hartley. Um, we would add, um, uh, obviously, the seat of Mount Gambia uh, to the two close-to-call. Uh, and there was one other which escapes me at the moment. But then there's four seats that uh, are too close-to-call. Um, I'm advised that... Uh, um, and I haven't had the discussion directly with Isabel, but I'm advised uh, from headquarters, I'm covering myself here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm advised, oh, I'm advised that, uh, that uh, she's, uh, for those reasons, not going to concede tonight, which is, I think, Kevin's assessment and my assessment earlier, uh, and that she'll be likely to be addressing um, our gathering tonight, probably around about 20 to 30 minutes, so around about 10 o'clock. Well, it would certainly be the sensation of the... It's the whole election story, if she appears to concede, <laughs> <laughs> particularly with these figures. Oh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and, of course, the, the, the big imponderable now is this issue of, um, of the postal votes. And uh, if we can talk in the broad, and I know that this will vary from seat to seat, but if we can talk in the broad, is there a tradition in South Australia of how the postal votes would fall? Well, I might let Rob answer that in the sense that Rob's been around <laughs> politics a lot longer than me. Crikey. Yeah, I'm a new... Well, I'm a whippersnipper compared to him. But I think, you know... Certainly according to your photograph. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, all I would say is that, you know, I would argue as well, and, and, and I'm not at all critical of or, or commenting on Rob, we think we've run a very good postal vote campaign. I guess some things you'll have to take in that to some of our advice was that we had a, you know, a reasonably good surge back to Labor in the last... Uh, 48, 72 hours of this campaign. Maybe our vote was a bit lower earlier in the campaign. I don't know. But well, I'd in be... other words, in other words, that being the case, that would suggest that the postals might have reflected a more damaging period in Labor's campaign. It may. I don't know. Uh, I do know that in many areas we got out ahead of our uh, opponents. Uh, whether it's in these seats, I don't know. But we would argue that we've run a very good uh, uh, postal vote campaign. No doubt Rob will argue the same. 